appreciate God for the grace we have to uh, have had, the grace we have to have had 12 lessons in this quarter. We have had lessons to the glory of God, and today we are taking the quarterly review. We just want to summarize all the lessons we have had in this uh, quarter, second quarter, 2023-2024, in the redeemed year. The first lesson is strength in quietness. Please let us pray. Father, we thank you for helping us so much. We thank you for what we have received. And we thank you for many more blessings ahead of us. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that you will please give us utterance. Help us to be doers of your word. Thank you, Father in heaven. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Welcome again. Uh, the first lesson in this quarter is strength in quietness. This strength in quietness will mean that the blessings that you derive, the, 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 the goodness that you find when you are a quiet person. Now, take note that we are trying to bring in two words, strength and quietness. This quietness, we mean that you should not be a fool who talks too much. Whatever you have to say, you must have quietly thought about it before saying it out so that your words will always be full of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 19 to 21. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 19 to 21 is our Bible passage for this lesson where the Bible says, In multitude of words they are found, they wanted not sin. That is, when you talk too much, sin will enter into those words. You will, you will lie, you will exaggerate unnecessarily, and so on. Our memory verse is James chapter 3. Verse 2, for in many things we offend all. If there is any man who does not sin in word, the same man is a perfect man. The fool's mouth is lesson outline one, and uh, lesson outline two is being slow to speak. So the, the bottom line is we aim to teach our students, that is, we aim in this Sunday school to teach the church that we should be slow to speak. We should be quick to hear. We should be slow to speak. Being slow to speak in the essence that you would have thought, you will have your, your thoughts well planned out before saying whatever you want to say. You will not be like one prophet in the Bible who God told not to eat in the particular city and the route that took him to that place should not be the one that will take him out. He, he divulged the information that pertains to his life to his enemies. You will not be like that in Jesus' name. The second lesson, which is lesson 15, is lessons from the four lepers. From the four lepers, we learn that it is not good for us to remain in our predicament, in our problem. These people had problem. They had peculiar problem, which is leprosy, and their state, their nation, had a problem of, of famine. There was famine in the land. These people said, we have been in one spot for a long time. We are almost dying of hunger. Let us go to the camp of the enemies and see whether they will have mercy or not. If they have mercy on us and they give us food, we will eat. If they don't have mercy on us and they kill us, then so be it. If we, if we don't go, we will die anyway. So they left. They, 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 they were able to summon courage. So we aim to teach through this lesson that Christians should be courageous to forge ahead, be courageous to move be courageous to take a step of faith and uh, uh, learn certain lessons from them. The first lesson is unity of purpose. These four lepers, they united and then launched out. Uh, again, they were proposed to, they were not just going to the camp of the enemy, they went there, they had their own purpose. God helped them, understanding 
they analyze, they interpret their situation. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you should be diligent enough to analyze prayerfully to know the cause of the problem and the possible solution. Then you take it to God in prayer. God will always help us. These people, they were resolute. They made up their mind to prosper. They made up their mind to, to, to take a step of faith. You should make up your mind to take a step of faith. Are you planning to travel and somebody is discouraging you? Once you have inner peace, once you have, you have a well thought out uh, uh, plan, you are free to go. Do just commit yourself to the hands of God. Of course, you have to know whether God does not want you to go. But once God says go, please forge ahead. Don't allow fear to, to stop you. Then hypocrites in the church. By this lesson, we say that we should be careful of people around us who don't really love us. People who don't really love God, but because of what they want to collect from us, what they want to gain from us, they begin to smile at us, they begin to play with us. You, at this point, you need discerning of spirit. If you don't have discernment, you don't have uh, uh, discerning of spirit, you may not be able to decipher between an enemy friend and a friend. So, people. Uh, the hypocrites around us. Please protect yourself. Also note that God is not more but to, whatsoever a man sow, that shall he reap. Nobody can uh, 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 lie to God or make God uh, how do I put it? Confuse God. No. God knows those who are hypocrites and he will reward them. Please don't be a hypocrite. The next lesson is a lying tongue. What are the traits of a liar? A liar, will, if you bring it to religion, will say anybody who says Jesus Christ is not the Son of God. Anyone who says Christ, who, who says Christ is not Lord. A liar claims to know God, but does not obey his commandment. Now, a liar is somebody who does not say the truth. A liar is someone who doesn't say the truth. You, as a Christian, ensure that you are not a liar. How do you ensure that you are not a liar? One, you have to be intentional about telling the truth all the time. You should also learn to bridle your tongue. Be a man of few words. Be a man or a woman of few words. Let's move on to the next lesson. Foundational truth. Second Timothy chapter 3. Verse 13 to 17 is our Bible passage for this lesson. And then John 17, 17, where Jesus says, uh, where Jesus says, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. There we say, Jesus Christ is the truth. The word of God is the truth. Now, Jesus Christ is the truth. The word is also the truth. That is, every time you hear the word of God, maybe during Bible study, personal Bible study or Bible study in the church, the word of God will always point at certain points, certain weakness, certain things in your life that you have to work on. As you work and pray on those aspects of your life that the word of God is pointing at, then you become cleaner. To become more righteous. By doing this, we say that it is possible for us to be righteous because the word of God sanctifies us at all times. Let the word of God work the perfection of God in our lives in Jesus' name. Gratitude is lesson 19. And what do we mean by gratitude? Well, let me say, just summarize it this way, that you should be thankful to God for whatever God has given you. Don't only concentrate on what you have not received from God. Keep thanking Him for what you have received. 
don't dwell so much on the miracles you have not received. Thank him for the blessings you have received. That way you will not fall to depression. So the first one is to say, thank God for what you have received from him. That's one. Please say one. Two, thank God. Be grateful to people around you. Be grateful to friends. Be grateful to colleagues at work. Be grateful to your employer. So be grateful to people. Appreciate God is the first one. The second one, appreciate people. Be, be, be thankful to people. And the third one is be thankful to yourself. What do I mean by be thankful to yourself? I mean take good care of yourself. Your body, it is because your body is healthy. That is why you can jump up and down. That is why you can go to your places of work. That is why you can go to parties. Please take care of this body. Once this body dies, your spirit cannot do anything in isolation. The spirit goes. So it is because the body is alive. That's why you are still very much around. Please take care of your body by eating good food by resting, by not doing anything that is detrimental to your health. So take care of yourself. That's a way of thanking yourself for uh, whatever job you have been doing. Show gratitude to God. Show gratitude to people. Show gratitude to your spouse. Show gratitude to your children. And then show gratitude to yourself. Blame game. Lesson 20 is blame game. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 13. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 13 is our Bible passage for this lesson. In this Genesis chapter 3, we see the account of Adam, God, and Eve, sorry, Adam, God, Eve, and Satan, the serpent, where they were trading blames. Now, with this lesson, we aim to say, that you should not blame people for whatever is happening to you. You should take responsibility and do things right. So take responsibility over whatever has happened and uh, see how you can correct it so that you can make progress. The more you blame people for your predicament, the more you become sad. Since you have been blaming people, has anything changed for the better? So you have to stop blaming God, stop blaming your spouse, stop blaming anyone, take responsibility. Ask God to give you, to show you the way out, and then take a step of faith. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Alternative spirituality is lesson 21. Alternative spirituality. Some people, they have plan B for God. That is, if God is late, I will try this. So whatever you think or you know aside God, please put them aside. Concentrate only on God. Don't go to necromancers. Don't go to astrologers. Don't start checking zodiac signs, uh, crystal fair, and so on. Don't go into sorcery because you want to find out the way to live. Don't forget in Africa, we believe that when you do things, I mean, if you go to the devil, don't forget that if you go to the devil to collect a cap from him, in turn, the devil will collect your head. Oh, please do not uh, 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 sell your soul to the devil. Hold on to God. Don't go into alternative spirituality. Wait on God. Don't worship stars. God himself will answer you. Well, lesson 22 out of, uh, I mean, from this quarter is uh, modern day idolatry. From this lesson, we say you should not place anything bigger than God. Don't place anything ahead of God. Let God be number one in your life. Let God be number one. Don't make your worldly pleasure, don't make your pleasure uh, 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 number one. Let God be first, and then other things can follow. Spirituality. Okay. Uh, and so we will go to uh, redemption package. 
redemption package says that uh, when you get born again, there are additional blessings. There are blessings that follow. There are blessings that follow the salvation that God has given us. What are those blessings? We have categorized them to three. The first one is deliverance. Deliverance from the curses, uh, from generational curses, from evil covenant, because we have been bought with a price. And what is that price? The blood of Jesus. We also have deliverance from demonic oppressions. So as you become born again, you receive deliverance with it. You receive deliverance from demonic oppression, deliverance from uh, fear, deliverance. The second blessing that follows our salvation is victory. Victory. This means you triumph, you dominate. Victory over sin, victory over the enemies, victory over the devil, victory over sicknesses and diseases. Phys victory over death, both physical and spiritual. Then prosperity. You receive prosperity with salvation. Prosperity comes with salvation. I pray for us these blessings will begin to manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. I mean deliverance will begin to manifest, victory will begin to manifest, and prosperity will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Christian apologetics. Christian apologetics, the, by this lesson, Jude chapter 3, I mean Jude 1, 3 to 4. Jude has only one chapter, Jude, 3, Jude verse 3 and 4. Jude verse 3 and 4. The Bible says uh, this, you should know how to answer anyone who asks you questions. It says you should learn to contend for the faith. We should earnestly contend for the faith. And um, our memory verse is 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, where the Bible says, Sanctify the Lord your God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We say that you should know God. Know God so that you can answer questions that people ask you. Know the Word of God. Know the Bible. Know what the Bible says about salvation. Know what the Bible says about heaven, about hell. Know what the Bible says. Know what you believe. Know who you believe and know how to answer. Please, you need to read these uh, lessons. Go through these lessons and then learn from them. Apologetics. Apology uh, is, yeah, it, it actually means to defend yourself to prepare a defense for yourself. So defend the faith. That's what we are talking about. Defend the faith. Know about the faith. Defend the Christian faith. And then um, move on serving God. May the Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. When you defend the faith, please don't let it become rowdy argument. Don't let it become a kind of argument that you begin to exchange blows just calmly when somebody confronts you to say don't you know jesus had girlfriends mary magdalene was his girlfriend and you want to defend that you don't have to exchange blow some people have so many untoward things to say about jesus christ you will just calmly explain to them without causing trouble okay we give glory to god for this second quarter and we trust god that we will meet again in the third quarter and the Lord will bless us together. Please make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure you share our videos to uh, everyone and please like. Let us see what your thoughts are in the comment section. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.